looking at the situation now, the, the conditions here are changing every minute, and that, that's fairly normal for landscape photography. When you're out in the field, it's um, very, very important to be aware of your environment, of the changing light conditions, be aware of where the light's coming from, um, the time of day is extremely important. Uh, we're here at the moment a um, couple of hours, two hours or more before sunset. Um, the light will change quite significantly over the next hour or so. And that's usually a very nice time to be taking landscape photographs. It's either early morning, directly after dawn, or immediately before sunset, where you get beautiful soft light diffusing through the clouds. Um, the conditions here have changed significantly over the last 10 minutes. When we first arrived here, um, it was completely hazy, grey, we couldn't see very much detail. The sun has come through the clouds, the haze has burnt off, and we're getting quite a nice view over the city now, which uh, is optimum for taking the, the photographs that we want to take. Obviously, though, the, the conditions change by the minute, so we continually need to uh, conserve changing our exposure settings on the camera uh, and waiting for the right moment. In many situations I usually hang around, once you found a good location like we found here, hang around for as long as you need and wait for that right moment before you capture that image. My particular preference uh, is probably very much different from many other photographers. You could bring 10 or 12 photographers up to the same location and ask them to shoot this they would all shoot it exactly differently. And um, I guess the, the way I approach um, taking an image, wherever that is, and particularly related to landscape photography, is I like to be someplace different. I like to get my camera in a location where nobody else has had their camera, so you can get that different shot. So it's very important for me to be able to uh, get myself to a location that's different by any means. Usually it's uh, using my legs, so having a good pair of boots, a good rucksack with your uh, camera gear in it and a nice portable light tripod is absolutely essential for me to get in to a particular location. I like to get away from it all. This is a, a city scene we're doing here, we're in the city. Um, most of the time I like to be out in the wilderness. I call me a wilderness photographer, environmental photographer. Um, that's what I prefer. I like to be uh, in areas where not many other photographers have been to try and capture something a little special. Um, the other technique that I use and I've touched on before, and I, I like atmospheric images, and particularly when we've got a situation with changing cloud conditions, perhaps we've got uh, a ruined uh, Cambodian temple in the middle of a jungle, that conjures up a, a, a tremendous kind of historical image to me, and I try and capture that one image and um, I, I need to capture as much detail as possible and that's why I use high dynamic range photography to capture as many brackets across the complete dynamic range of that scene and sometimes these scenes are an incredibly huge dynamic range which our eyes can see and adjust for but the camera can't quite cope with all of that dynamic range. Well here we are on a landscape photography location. We've found the right spot we want to set up at. Um, we've chosen a location looking here out over the city of KL um, so we know exactly where we want to set up our tripod and just going through a kind of pre-shot discipline um, here's a number of things that I actually do as a photographer. First and most important thing is setting up your tripod in a stable situation to give your camera uh, a vibration free and stable situation to take the shot. So very important to set up the tripod like we have here. Um, this one has an additional hook here you'll notice. We can actually tie on a weight. You can use your camera bag uh, for instance in windy conditions where you might get a little bit of movement. That will help st stabilize the tripod even more. So that's the first thing I do. Make sure the tripod is absolutely stable. Once we've got the camera onto the base plate of the tripod, the next thing I do is ensure that the camera is absolutely level. Um, for a large wide frame landscape like we're shooting here, it's not particularly important to get it absolutely level, perhaps more so for uh, architectural shots, but um, in terms of discipline it's always good to get your camera level. Two ways we can do that, we can use 
there's a couple of bubble meters uh, situated on the very top of the tripod here which we can use to get a rough level but what I normally do is there's a facility within the Canon 5D Mark II or Mark III to get an absolute level both horizontally and vertically to make sure the camera is absolutely level. Once we've done that we've got our camera on a stable platform, it's level. You can see here I'm um, set up with a 1635 wide angle Canon lens which um, is one of the shots I would certainly consider for this environment here. We're looking out over the city of KL, we've got a beautiful view over tropical jungle with the cityscape rising out of that. So a nice one of my views here would be to grab an image with a wide angle shot looking out over the whole of the city and we can adjust obviously 1635 gives us a fairly good range of um, exactly how we would want to frame that shot. Once we've got it absolutely framed the next thing we have to consider is obviously how we want to expose that image um, in terms of um, our f-stop, our aperture. Uh, I generally tend to use quite a small aperture for landscapes typically starting f8 and above depending on the situation. If for example I had a landscape situation with um, perhaps an object in the foreground which is actually quite good to do to have a foreground object which gives you a, a, a sense of depth into the actual frame I would use a, a, a much smaller aperture perhaps f12 or even up to as far as maybe even f22 but for this particular one I've got the camera set on uh, aperture priority it's sitting at f8 just now and we can basically set up our shot and um, basically just take the individual shots. I can take it by you know releasing the shutter button as you just saw me do there just now but a preferable method of doing that and um, the whole issue here is we want to minimize any movement of the tripod so even by touching the camera and releasing the shutter you are making small movements in the camera which can affect the, the final quality of your image so uh, what I tend to do there is actually use the timer I use the timer at either 2 seconds or 10 seconds, trigger the shutter release, stand back and then you're absolutely sure that the tripod is going to be in a fairly stable situation for that shot. So one other mechanism I use to uh, keep the camera as still as possible on the tripod is use the mirror lockup function if your camera has that. That allows you to lock the mirror up and then uh, open the shutter. Um, that again minimizes even the smallest bit of the vibration you may get from the mirror movement. Um, with these modern cameras such as the, the Canon 5D Mark III here, we have a live view function which actually allows you, you don't need to use mirror lockup, essentially the live view is locking up the mirror anyway. So that's another very very useful technique to use when doing uh, landscape uh, photography is when you're actually um, taking the image is to use live view and then you won't get any movement from the mirror whatsoever. So we've got the camera on a stable platform, it's level, we've got it framed, we're making sure we're either on timer, we're using live view to minimize any mirror movement so we can take as many photographs as we want now in that stable type of situation. Um, next thing to consider is how we actually expose for an environment like this. We've got a fairly large landscape here with a um, uh, city scene with um, a reasonably bright to grey overclouded sky above that. So the big question I always ask myself is, is what do we want to expose for? Uh, the way I generally approach that is you expose for your subject matter. Uh, if the subject matter in this case is the sky, if we've got a fantastic sky happening, either a sunset or maybe a dawn, I would expose for the sky if that's our focus of the image. In this case, I want to focus in on the actual city itself, the, the skyline, KL skyline, including the Petronas Towers, the KL Tower. So I'm going to be exposing for that particular part of the image. So we can set up in our camera particular part of the image in the frame that we want to expose for. As I said before I'm setting this at a nominal f8, we can go a little bit further up, it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Um, I'm going to shoot this at f8 and 
if we expose for the city skyline, what we'll probably see in many cases, um, not so much today, but in some cases where it's extremely bright in the sky, your whole sky will be blown out. It will be very, very bright. Your subject matter may be perfectly exposed, but your sky will be blown out. So how do you handle that situation? There's a number of ways you can do that. Um, you can use a graduated filter in front of the lens, um, which will basically have a darkened portion over the upper part of the lens, thereby minimizing the exposure of the sky and bring out more detail. Um, method that I tend to prefer is actually I take a number of bracketed shots at different exposure settings. And um, I do a lot of high dynamic range photography where I actually take a number of bracketed shots that might be three, could be five. If we've got a scene with a very, very large dynamic range, i.e. changes in light conditions from extremely dark to extremely bright, I might even take seven brackets or even nine brackets over that whole dynamic range. And you can check the um, curves in your uh, camera to, to make sure that you're covering the whole of that dynamic range. Um, I then use those brackets and I run that through a high dynamic range um, post-processing application. I actually use Photomatix Pro. There's an, even taking one or two different exposures at uh, different settings, you can blend that in Photoshop. There's different methods of doing that. I use a full HDR post-processing application to do that. By using that technique, you can actually bring up all the details in your bright sky and also all the details perhaps in the lower part of this image in the darkened uh, portions of where the, where the trees are. So you'll get a nice even exposure over the whole image. So that's that's one particular shot I would consider for this, this scene here over the, the city is using a wide angle lens as we've got in here. One other uh, image I would consider for here would be a close cropped image directly in on the buildings I might want to focus on, in this case perhaps the Petronas Towers and the KL Tower. Uh, in that case I would change out this lens, I would perhaps put a 50mm lens on there or more likely I would put a large 70-200 to 200 lens where I could really zoom in and frame exactly where I want to take that shot. And um, I mean landscape photography is not all about just wide angle lenses. Many different people, a lot of people think it's just wide angle lenses, certainly not the case. I use a, a large uh, zoom lens many times to zoom in in the part of the frame that you want to focus on. So that's another option for this location here. Third option I would possibly go for is take a nominal lens, maybe a 40mm or a 50mm lens. I would actually um, put the camera in a vertical position here uh, instead of horizontal in portrait mode and I would shoot a number of shots and pan round after each shot and effectively build up a number of images therefore I can create a, a very large panorama of this uh, wonderful landscape here. Um, to do that I would generally uh, take about a 25% to 30% overlap in all the images and again for that type of photography a very stable uh, platform and uh, tripod is essential for that type of work and smooth movement so you can actually move around horizontally or you might want to do a vertical panorama, I've done that many times where you might be taking a waterfall or a tall building you can actually set this up and take a number of images vertically so it doesn't necessarily need to be in landscape mode. So that's a number of options that I would um, consider for this particular location. You can see here that the conditions are changing dramatically even over the five or ten minutes that we've been here doing this film. Um, it's changed from a completely overcast hazy situation. The sun has come out, the haze is being burnt off and we're seeing more and more. So that's a ve another very important aspect to remember about landscape photography is being able to wait. Be patient. Uh, if the shot doesn't look nice, sit around, have a cup of tea, come back, take another look and conditions might change and within a small two minute window you might get a fantastic panorama like we are seeing right now.